Hey guys, welcome. I'm going to be going over two things. One is going to be, yes, Blender 4.0 is out. There really isn't a whole lot going on with it yet. There's a main branch under experimental. If you have the Blender launcher, if you don't type in Blender launcher in any search engine and click the download link, go into daily. There is an alpha version, which I am using. And if you come over to the website, you'll see that the two main points right now are the Python API upgrade to the glossy BSDF being merged with the Anisotropic. This will still call that shader, but it's gonna come up like this once you do. And it's, this is gonna be the new nomenclature for it now. And that works in visual scripting, like so if I'm doing uh, Serpent's Python and I'm in here and I wanna call up, there we go, I had to pull up something that actually references this perfectly. And so if you were going to use BLID names like for shader nodes, and this one actually points to a color ramp, which is kind of funny. It's not, it doesn't even look like it. And you were in your visual scripting and for something, okay, there it is. For something important, you needed your print node, your trigger and your BLID name, and you type in color ramp and hit print then you get this nomenclature and so that's kind of what they're talking about I don't know if anybody else is doing a lot of that but that's gonna help out to have that kind of reference and there really aren't isn't too much going on with it yet the EV next and other things as far as I know isn't even locked in and so I was coming back over to look at the uh, glossy BSDF and they haven't changed it yet so nothing really to see here the anisotropic and the glossy still here so it's really not a lot going on. But with the hard service toolbox, uh, if you were to, all right, so jumping over to the bull box, shift alt E will pull that up and you get your difference, intersection, union, cube, all the mesh primitives. You'll have a live preview, which will help you see it through the mesh. An append to 3D cursor applies scale and a non-destructive. The non-destructive is gonna create copies of everything. Um, so you can just hit okay and it, <laughs> It appended to the 3D cursor, which is way down there. Let's bring the 3D cursor here. You could turn it off and then back on. It'll snap it back up for you. And then you can kind of come through, change it to sphere, see how this is going to look if you wanted to kind of um, check the different setups. You can pop a cylinder in here and bring up the cylinder verts and see how that's going to look. And you know, maybe you want to get it over here. You can just snap the cursor over there and reappend it, and it will do that for you. And then, of course, you can do the torus and the cone and get all those different setups however you want them to look. And then these three controls here will control the rings, vertices, and so on of each individual mesh accordingly. And then, of course, like you know, switch it to an intersection if you want. And it's all live, which is kind of cool. Switch it to a union. You don't have a whole lot of use for that unless I'm using Boolean brushes or something like that. The difference Boolean is the one that is used more than anything else. And of course, like I said, you just kind of snap this thing around and do what you want with it. So that with some of the other modeling tools here will help you out a lot. And if you did not pick up the UV procedural brick setup that I did, and give that add-on away free then i'll put a link down below you can go pick that up and use the uh, geometry nodes uv setup it's pretty cool got a tutorial on it it's kind of helpful for procedural materials but other than that the 4.0 release is growing pretty fast because they just uploaded a compiled version last night and now we've already got some updates so i really can't wait to see what's going to happen with this guys that's it i'll see you guys in the next tutorial